Hi, Bernard. Hi, Carl. How are you? Good, good, good. How are you? Oh, what are we doing in this video? Yeah, um, so this one is regarding the resilience testing. So we want to see how our cluster performs when we do plan stuff, right? So maintenance is occurring often, like installing patches. This drain the ro drain the nodes of the cluster, right? So pausing a node for maintenance, for example, that we mm -hmm. can reboot it. So we are um, we are also wanting to do the same stuff. Um, in a site kind of view, right? So maybe there is a planned outage of one geography or of one site that we have, mm -hmm. um, and we need to um, shut down or live migrate the workload over to the first or to, to the remaining site, right? So we will do some live migrations, but we will also do, um, you know, look over which networks the live migration uh, will be happening, right? Because that takes dictates the speed that we are able to achieve. And then um, there is some storage traffic um, that might need to be redirected. So we want to make sure that we have a, a look at this. And um, also, uh, we talk about to change the replication direction, right? Um, and we'll go a little bit more in detail what happens and uh, how to look at this. And um, yeah, um, then we will shut down or we try to shut down a complete site um, and then boot it up again and then see what happens when the nodes are back online um, and have a look at the repair jobs right so hopefully it's like a long one right <laughs> be prepared yeah. for a lot of yeah. stuff <laughs> right but um, uh, I guess you get and or at least I get these kind of questions um, uh, often so let's make sure that we will cover this um, yeah, hopefully we'll manage to get everything into it. So yeah. let's switch over to your system and do a, you know, node maintenance first. We will. Uh, so uh, as an example for planned maintenance, I was at, I was at a customer recently and they had a, 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 the power company had to do something on the power line. So they said, we will turn off the power then and then for, let's say, two hours or so. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, it's, that would be an example for a planned outage or planned maintenance. Mm -hmm. First, uh, what do we have done? In the last video, we were playing around with VM Fleet. Uh, we mm -hmm. now use VM Fleet uh, to generate some workload. Yeah, We have now mm -hmm. our 140 VMs running. Um, every VM is doing 400 uh, IOPS. Um, mm -hmm. So you see here we have we have quite some IO going on. We are not testing the limits, but uh, mm -hmm. you see we have 50,000 IOPS in the yeah. cluster running. So um, simulating a normal normal load. Exactly, right? simulating mm -hmm. a normal workload. So um, mm -hmm. Um, let's go to our host. Here we again see our, our management uh, mm -hmm. VM. We see yeah. the cluster. Yeah. We see all the roles. And when we um, would shut down one node or want to patch a node, uh, mm -hmm. there is a nice feature in failover cluster called um, pause. Yeah, we pause. can pause a node. Mm -hmm. And um, we will do that. But first here, I went to roles. So down here, we see all the VMs and some other roles that are running on this node, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So when I click on pause, we have two options. We can drain the role, so move all the roles mm -hmm. and all the groups of the cluster to another, to yeah. another host, mm -hmm. or we can just say a uh, pause a node so it's not available for placement of new vms yeah mm -hmm. but everything will stay there as it is right. we of course want to pause it so no new vms will uh, land on this uh, node and also move everything away that's uh, that's running mm -hmm. on it right okay yep. so let's do that and mm -hmm. hopefully we, sh we should see something down here mm -hmm. What we won't now. Now it's going on. So we see some mm -hmm. live migrations kicking in, and you see at the scroll bar, it's it's moving fast. So we have five live migrations mm -hmm. uh, in parallel, and now everything is gone. So we will not see any. The mm -hmm. pool is not here. If it was, we, we haven't looked. 
-hmm. there are no ownership uh, of the uh, volumes or uh, the cluster shared volumes uh, there is okay. nothing on the host anymore so, okay so let's just you know pause here uh, yeah. what would be you know you are on the odd site right you mm -hmm. are pausing node number one which is one node on the odd side mm -hmm. where would the roles go i mean you're on the go? on the node in the same side right not we will not move it to let's say from london yeah. to paris and run it, run right. them there that would be not so great we will <laughs> leave them yeah. in the same side if there is space available of course right. here you see all our our vms with the name hc1 in it are now running on the third node the same okay. and you see here every everything up to 35 is running on the third node so of and course the third case, node has to have space for it right right yeah. and um yeah that's important i mean depending on how many nodes you have in a cluster and in each site right um you know in our case it's quite obvious that only node number three is the one available right mm -hmm. uh if we would have a six node cluster for example it would uh, or a six node cluster it would be different right um we would have maybe another option um on uh, or we would have another option and the roles would be you know sort of maybe um separated a little bit equally well, spread ab about the two yeah. remaining nodes in the side yes okay. so uh but this is important we have only two two nodes per side mm -hmm. so we have to have space so we can yeah. only fill 50 percent of our of right. our nodes with VMs. Otherwise, we are not able to move the VMs from one node to the other node, right? There's right. also something with the priorities. Uh, so mm -hmm. in, a, in a cluster when uh, VMs, when, when there's not enough space, um, when you change the priority for some roles to high, for some roles to low, um, the high roles would, uh, would um, how you call that, would, would cause the low roles to make place so that the high roles can be placed on the cluster if there's not enough mm -hmm. memory, for yeah. example. Yeah, but we we didn't play with the priority here, but it's an option. Okay. Okay. So let's so, let's get it back, or um, yeah, let's get it back, and um, you know the um, just to make sure the networks that are being used for this is um, are the SMB networks, right? So um, if we would you know, um, if you would um, um, unpause the node and put it back into production, then um, the virtual machines would be shifted back. Um, but we shouldn't see any traffic here on these adapters, exactly. right? Because, because it's, it's RDMA, RDMA we yeah. wouldn't see it, right? So yeah. I just showed something. When a node uh -huh. is paused in Azure Stack HCI, um, uh -huh. we also have repair jobs here. Mm -hmm. And you have to be aware of that because if, if a node is paused longer, Microsoft uh, is um, putting the devices of the node in the storage maintenance mode. So if we do a get physical disk, we see there are some devices in maintenance mode. To yep. There are six, so we have uh, six NVMEs in every node. So now no I.O. is going to these devices. So don't let the, 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 the pause mode too long on your notes because in the moment we are queuing up changes that can't mm. be written to these devices. So let's get rid of the maintenance mode, mm -hmm. not the maintenance mode, the pause mode. So we have resume here. Mm -hmm. We can just resume the cluster. So the roads will, be, will stay there where they are now. Mm -hmm. Or we can say, put everything back where it was. And mm -hmm. that's usually what we want. So mm -hmm. um, if we go to failback role, we should coming our roles in here again if they run again mm -hmm. on the host. So there should be, okay. there are the, our VMs. First, it, uh, it put some important cluster parts here. And now all the VMs are coming. Yeah, you see mm -hmm. them. Okay live migrating on the node again okay here they are good so if we go now mm -hmm. uh, if we if we see now our disks are still in maintenance mode it will get rid of that very soon and then our mm -hmm. repair jobs will 
start. Uh -huh. And because it's Azure Stack HCI, we have the sub extend repair. It's very fast. So uh -huh. usually um, you see stop maintenance mode. Um, usually yeah. you can't really uh, put huge damage here because the repairs uh -huh. are very fast, but at least be aware of it. Yeah. So uh -huh. now the volumes are complete again or the maintenance mode of the yep. drives is off now and you see the repair jobs running and they are you see here every volume has to be repaired mm -hmm. at least some of the extents weren't there and if you asking yourself so what are extents uh, look at our our installation series i think we mentioned that so it's just okay it's nearly Good. done so the learning would be i mean if you do a you know a maintenance mode for um or if you do a node maintenance and pause a node you know don't go vacation in between uh you know make it exactly you know, make, make the, the time put it short right. and then and then go come vacation and, and then resume it okay <laughs> um yeah so let's just wait until the this is uh this is yeah it it's it's already finishing up so it's it's fast it's maybe some minutes, mm -hmm. three, four minutes, and then we are done. So let's yeah. do mm -hmm. our next part. We want to um, we want to simulate. Yes. Uh, we have a planned downtime of uh, of a site. Yeah, right. the unplanned thing we will do in the next video. But the planned yeah. thing is uh, we shouldn't wait that the power is mm -hmm. turned off. We can do something because we know mm -hmm. power is going away in let's say in two hours or so. So we 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 can. We okay, so how you know you our workloads, right? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, for example, I mean, we did use the pause button in the previous uh, in the first test, right? So, so you um, it, would you be able to do a second pause, right? Because the people yeah. new to HCI might be think uh, might uh, might think, hey, uh, let's pause one node and maybe also the other nodes in the same uh, in the same mm -hmm. site, and then uh, something magic happens. No. So in right. the beginning of storage basis direct, this this was possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so people could uh, pause multiple nodes, but uh, in recent recent um, versions of storage basis direct and Azure Stack HCI, storage basis direct in Windows Server and uh, Azure Stack HCI, uh, if you have one node in pause, yeah, and we then the storage is not complete we saw that right and if uh -huh. we want to do a pause with a with a host it will check if the storage is okay and if it's not it will say no you can't pause the node because the storage is not something like that the storage is not uh, a complete or something so we can't okay. pause multiple nodes we can try that if you want when our repairs are done but yeah, uh, uh, no, I'll, I'll I'll trust you. So um, the next question that I would have, or let me phrase it for the uh, for for the viewers, is okay, um, understood. But is there something like a pause site kind of functionality, like where I go to the failover cluster manager and say, hey, uh, this is site number A or this is site number B, whether it is in failover cluster manager or maybe in PowerShell, is there something that tells me, hey, pause site and drain all the roads to, uh, and, and, and migrate all the roles to the other site? As far as I know, not, um, yeah. and, and but I don't know everything, but I'm yeah. pretty sure there is not, so we have to do it manually, right? Right. There are also other possibilities. We don't have to pause a node. We can also move all the roles away uh, um, um, manually. So, we, for example, if we want to live migrate some VMs, uh, we just pick them in failover cluster manager and say move, live migrate, mm -hmm. and we let him choose the host or we specify a host. So that would be a possibility to move mm -hmm. the VMs from the odd side to the even side, right? Or the other way around. Let's do it the other way around because we have we have some things uh, on the uh, odd side. We see our watch cluster and so on. So if we we okay. start the host on the odd side, we don't wouldn't see that, right? Mm -hmm. So um, no, unfortunately not. Maybe this is coming in in the future, but I have no clue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah. Because uh, normally you don't have to. Uh, it's not the normal state that you shut down one side, right? Normally it's yeah. A I mean it's. 
it's a you know it's a, a maybe a special case or more like a random uh, not a random but more a, a rare a, a, a rare a rare case right but um yeah just to make sure because that might you know one or the other uh, yeah, but it happens uh, i was at a customer might, where yeah. they have a planned uh, downtime right right okay so your repair jobs are done um yes. And I think we can now start to. Uh, what did you say? You want to move the virtual? You want to uh, uh, pause or you know shut down site number even or the even, the even site? number, right? Okay. Two and four. Yeah. Okay. You so see here see. we have our VMs here. Right. Okay. Good. I can pick them here like this, or yeah. I can go to roles, of course. Uh, right. Order, for example, by the node, the owner mm -hmm. node, okay. and we see here yep. the one. Okay. And our node two is coming. All right. So let's yeah, let's do a test. So pick one virtual machine or a couple of one, a uh, couple of. I pick four. Then, yeah, and then do the move manually. So we can do move live migrate, and now if we just decide, let the cluster decide where to move it, it right. will move it from two to four, right? Yes. And in the same, same side. side. But we want yeah. to move it from two to uh, the other side. So we have to select the node, one yeah. or three, for example. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. do one. Let's yeah. move from two to one and from four to three, right? And we okay. go to OK, and yeah. we, we, get a, we get an error. Ooh. So what happens? So if you would go for the, um, and sort of this is expected or unexpected, expected, um, the way it's how expected. you put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's have a look at the, uh, the error message, and we'll. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we. Uh, if there is not much information there, we can tell the people what it is. So, mm -hmm. failed to get network address destination. Cluster right. network is not available for this operation. And mm -hmm. uh, we did our live migration test when we didn't have the cluster. So the live migration of our big VM was fine. We can we could move it around mm -hmm. for, uh, in in the site and even uh, between the sites. Uh, this is not a problem of the live migration. Um, unfortunately, in the moment, we have November uh, 2023. There is a right. bug in uh, the stretch cluster scenario. I learned or we learned that it's uh, when they fix something in the switchless uh, design. Uh, and if you want to know what is switchless, uh, go to our um, Azure Stack installation series. Uh, I think mm -hmm. we talk about it there. Uh, but mm -hmm. they fixed something in the switchless uh, switchless scenario because it's very common if you have a two-node cluster, and two-node clusters are very popular with Azure Stack HCI. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they they broke something in the live migration here, so we have a we have a workaround for this, and mm -hmm. they are working on a fix. So uh, when you see this series, maybe this bug is not there anymore. Yeah, but in the moment it's there, and we have a workaround. Okay, so yeah, that would be you know the annotation would be um, if you're watching this series and it's you know in next year 20, maybe twenty twenty next year um, and you see this error, um, please make sure that you run the latest bits because this problem may have already been fixed, um, right? So upgrade your system um, if you see that error um, and you know um and still it's still not working or hasn't been fixed then um Carsten will show you a way on how to get around it um and i think we'll talk over it now or you know is that's you know that. yeah that's live migration right so we are not shutting down the virtual machine or not pausing okay. it there is still a remedy around this i mean if you can um live with it a uh, quick like quick migration would work Right. Yeah. Um, it's just the live migration functionality that is broken at this stage. So if you would, so let's do a quick migration to show it. Right. Um, yep. And quick migration. We will save the memory and the processor state uh, in the configuration of the virtual machine. So it's it's paused in the moment. So we can't mm -hmm. work with it. Mm -hmm. And then it started or or reloaded. The, the machine is is created on the on the destination host, and the memory and the processor state is reloaded. So right. we have a we have a a, a a time where the where the workload or the VM is not available. So right. if it has not much memory, you can maybe go that way. If you have a VM with, let's say, 500 gigabytes of memory, uh, it would take minutes, and then your application uh, would be not responsible anymore. So for small VMs, quick migration, 
Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you can do that. But I show you now now the fix, and to be uh -huh. to be fair, the fix mm -hmm. uh, uh, will break a little bit the requirement of a stretched cluster because we right. need one not stretched network, mm -hmm. and that's by definition not allowed <laughs> in an Azure Stack HCI stretched cluster. But uh, it's it's only a fix uh, for the moment. So. Or uh, a we can workaround. Create, let's let's yeah, it's a put workaround. it like this. And it should be a temporary workaround until yeah. this feature has been fixed by the project. So I will create another network adapter. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, the same subnet on both sides and mm -hmm. has the same VLAN ID. And we also, uh, it's also presented in the stretched switches. So it's not routed. Okay. It's just mm -hmm. one subnet. Uh, let me. <laughs> I have to change, of course, in the right directory uh, where uh -huh. the script okay. is. And now it will create this. So let's see. Here we are correctly. I prepared that already. So basically, it's a network with the same IP address, uh, IP address range in all uh, in on all nodes, right? I mean, yes. they do have a different IP address, but it's the same subnet, uh, and hence the cluster could see the other node on one single subnet Net um, adapter yes now we have here uh, a backup network and if okay. we do an ip config we see the backup network here has this network and every node mm -hmm. okay so if we ping the 20 the 52 it it would be in the other side it's possible the 53 is possible and the 54 mm -hmm. is possible. So um, with this workaround and to be to be uh, to be perfectly clear, this network is not supported, but it's in, it's in the moment the way that the live migration can communicate to the other side. And mm -hmm. if it's fixed so that it will work uh, work again, so this bug is fixed, uh, please remove this network. If you if you create it, please remove it because we are violating the rule. Don't okay. have every network between the sides has to be routed. This is, of course, not routed. It's just a, a, a plain layer to a broadcast domain. OK, so now let's mm -hmm. try again. If we can do our live migration, let's do it with one VM. Mm -hmm. Live migrate, select node. Mm -hmm. Let's try the first one. It's not working yet. Wait. Um, this network, this is our fleet internal. Yeah, we yeah. have to change something here. It's from VM fleet. So usually we you should it. not have this network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is partitioned because every host has the same address, same IPv4 address. Uh, but now it should, the live migration should work. So we, we, we told the cluster this network we can is, is it's not the one that we want to look at right so that's just for vm fleet it's which... a fleet internal network and mm -hmm. we'll name this one backup mm -hmm. or you can temporary live migration you are using temp and live migration mm -hmm. but to be uh to be exact, this network will not be used for the live migration. It's just, maybe it will be used. No, it will not be used. Let's see. Let's see, yeah, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> what happened. So first, let's try the live migration again. Uh -huh. So now it works. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So if you go for the networks now, uh, let's see how, which network is being used. Yeah, but let me first uh, take all ones. of the VMs, or should yeah. we move a large one? No, all good. I mean, take take the take the bunch, right, and then open ah, up task manager. These are very the small other. VMs. Let's see if it. Uh, how can I fetch them all? Let's let's order it by name, and then we have here everything that is running on the second one here. Let's do a move, live migrate, select host one, and then we have still some left. So let's, live migration is working. I go to the target and now mm -hmm. 
we have to find the network with the most traffic yeah it and was cluster one it should cluster be cluster two. but because the vms are so small we, we don't get really speed here so it we was, will yeah um, if you select it, um, it will highlight that there, there were some spikes going yeah. up to gigabytes. So, yeah. so maybe we start a, a large VM and move that so that we see a constant traffic because I think it's important. Yeah, we can do that. But if you want to, I think it would have been enough for me. I mean, the, I've seen the spikes, but anyways, okay, let's. Yeah, first we have to move this. To the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is running on the fourth one. They're not orderly, so pretty. Yeah, so we can move those resources. Mm -hmm. And okay, now you so want let's... to move the VMs from. Do you want to move the ones from four to three as well? Exactly, four. Let's move the four and move them all to the, to the third node, right? Yeah, yeah. And before you press OK, now go to node number four, maybe, and do open up task manager, right? And um, yeah, select the cluster network or one of them just to refresh it now please if you could go back to your uh, admin machine and then hit okay let's just try it out and then switch over yes and see if we see the same yeah, we saw we see some gigabytes here 22 yes, have yes, you seen yes. so yes but uh, the vms are not very big so yeah it's starting I, going down starting going but down but you could see the spike going up but i think yeah. you know uh, that would you know work for me i mean you could see the jumps around a little bit but i think it's uh, it's showing a good um it's showing its use it's right one um, gigabits we don't have that but this is still we have some peaks with 20 gigabits yeah. here right yeah 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 that's good nice okay um i think it worked right so it was sort of expected so now um, and the funny thing is, although we create the, you created the uh, additional network, it was not used for the live migration, right? Exactly. It was just there for the uh, for the logic now, uh, which is kind of broken for the stretch clustering um, to do the live migrations. Do you know why it, it was not used? Because we told SMB3 which way to go between the host. And remember our SMB yeah. multi-channel constraints, right? Which is good. But we have to um, do more. Yes, okay. Now, um, what are you referring to? Like the virtual machines are now on the other side or at least working on um, or being executed on the um, on the odd side, right? Exactly. But where are the disks, right? So the storage is still remaining on the nodes number, the even nodes, right? Exactly. So we should see some hmm. traffic here. Okay. Because the VMs are running now on the first node, mm -hmm. but if we look uh, in um, here in uh, Windows Admin Center at the storage mm -hmm. replication, our volumes are not are, are not mm -hmm. moved or not uh, the replication mm -hmm. is not changed the site. So uh, we have still volume two and four should be still be uh, owned by a node in the in the uh, even side so mm -hmm. the replication or the, the the data is still in the even side the vms are running on the odd side now so they they have all the mm -hmm. rights have to go over to the even side written to the volumes and then the replica is going back again but because okay. our vms are not doing too much traffic we maybe have some problems to see it where it's going Right. So okay, so here, I mean, it it is sort of logic, right? So we only move the virtual machine, we not mm -hmm. move the, the the volume, right? So the volume is still the same how we set it up in the beginning. So, um, but there is no, you know, um, um, the way how we would, you know, sort of move it is by changing the replication order. Mm -hmm. Is that the thing that we need to do? We do that with switch direction, right? Mm -hmm. But first, let's see if we see the the traffic. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. yeah so good. let's go here. So mm -hmm. if this is true, mm -hmm. um, the node two is owner of the second volume that has a name um, 
like the host. Mm -hmm. So uh, it should get uh, all the traffic from the VMs that are um, that have the name uh, of the host. Yeah, uh, it's mm -hmm. it's complicated to say. So these VMs they mm -hmm. still yeah. generate traffic, right? Let's see right. if they're running. I hope they are running because there's nothing showing here in the black screen. Yeah, they are running. Yeah, they are not mm -hmm. doing too much I/O, but mm -hmm. they are running. Mm -hmm. So if we look here, somewhere here we should see traffic, and we are not doing the live migration anymore. Mm -hmm. So the traffic on the cluster network here is not our live migration, but we have still 330 megabits mm -hmm. two times. Yeah. Yeah. So if I would increase, for example, our workload, let's say mm -hmm. let's let's let the VMs do 800 IOPS each, uh -huh. we should, if this it network is the right one, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it should go up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's just do that. We had 300 something. Let's see here. Here's our. So if mm -hmm. I do 100 here, mm -hmm. okay, per thread. We should see the VM picking, picking up. up. Oh, there's a statistic. I haven't I haven't seen that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> First time here. So we go back to the second node. And here are our mm. cluster networks are still at yeah. 300, but now they are picking up speed here. You see? Yeah. 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 600. Okay. So if we if we click here, uh, yeah. it's too late maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we have seen, ah, oh, we see it still. Uh, here was yeah. the traffic before, yeah, somehow, and now it picked up. Okay, so yes, so assume this is now the redirected I/O, so meaning the virtual machine is running, uh, being executed in a node number one, for example, but needs to write to uh, all the writes needs to go to node number two in order to get to the disk and then you know sort of replicate it again. It seems like you know that this is not the ideal setup at the moment, right? So, it's um, not, yeah. yeah. So, um, therefore, we want to switch the replication order, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and we don't want our volumes if we shut down or the power goes off. It's, yeah, it's okay. plant maintenance, yeah. but the right. the volumes are still on the on the even side. We would have mm -hmm. an outage, right? Or yeah. At least uh, the cluster would would lose something. Hopefully, we'll uh, bring up the volumes on the other side, of course. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, we can we can do a planned failover, so no no data at risk here. Mm -hmm. So let's okay. let's do that. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe I go down with the I/O again, so yep. we don't have too much I/O. Or? So maybe before you before you switch the direction, um, can we have a look at the disks um, in failover cluster manager and have a look at you know for example volume uh, on, on the volume that is currently hosted on node number two. So if that you know changes the cluster virtual disk for Tokar Air HCI two. That's a replica. Wait, so we have to I order the volumes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the second one, right? So this, this right, is the volume right. and the log file, they are both on two. Mm -hmm. And the so. replica for those is on one. Okay, so that should change, right? Exactly. So I okay. click on it. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. And we have also the replication here. We, we, we have seen that before. Right. So it should, it should change. Here's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. So I okay. So... Should I go down with the I/O, or should we stay at uh, at uh, thirty thousand IOPS per? Let's go down again. Yeah. Or. Yes. Let's relieve. Because the otherwise, the replication maybe needs longer, and we don't have too much time in the video. We are already mm -hmm. over half an hour. Okay. So um, this one is on the wrong side, and this one. So I go here, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then we have these nice switch direction here. Uh -huh. So we can click on it. Uh, and we say switch direction. So it will switch the partnership direction. Uh, it should refresh, switch partnership direction successfully switched, but it's not updated yet. So let's 
Oh, a refresh is not possible. Okay. Yeah, maybe we need to be a bit patient on this one. Yeah, but just to, to make sure. Ah, uh, yes. So now it's waiting for the destination. Okay. Exactly. Let's see if the VMs are still running, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We will do that with the VM in the in the off of the fourth node. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you see the log record copy to destination. He's stating here what he's doing, mm -hmm. what it is doing. Mm -hmm. It's not a he; it's a it. Um, and I think very soon our our replication is again in sync yeah? mm -hmm. because when we switch the sites, there was maybe some I/O that has has to be re replicated again. So mm -hmm. should be fine soon. Mm -hmm. And you also can check this with PowerShell. But question that I would have is what happened? I mean, in the previous video at some stage, right, where we shaped the Perfect. traffic, uh, we sort of, you know, set the uh, uh, storage replication constraints to use certain network traffics or ne mm -hmm. certain network, exactly. cluster network, right? Would we need to do this one again now because we changed sort of, you know, the source with the destination, we exchanged it, would we, we required to you know sort of do the same thing again no sr network constraints mm -hmm. it's a good question bernard so if we look at our network constraints we are talking about the second one right this one. right we have yeah. four constraints here mm -hmm. um the the cluster performance history constraint is missing uh, mm -hmm. so it's doing it's thing over management but not so important so mm -hmm. we had our we had source first. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we are talking about the second the second volume. So it was normally on the mm -hmm. even side. So source was uneven, and mm -hmm. uh, it was this group replicating mm -hmm. to the other side. And you see now the source and the interfaces are are mm -hmm. changed. So let's right. have a look at the fourth one. The fourth one is like like the second one was. We have our source on the fourth node in the, yep. the four group, and it's replicating to the replica group. So mm -hmm. even to odd source. Yep. And if we do that again, then it will be the, like this. So if you have the yep. constraints set, the cluster will switch them also, like the partnership. Yeah, which makes sense. Do anything. And, uh, which is a good, a good thing. Okay, then. Uh... Okay, so now let's open. Let let us open a VM. Uh, of the fourth node. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here we, we are at our volume. It's now on the first one, right? Mm -hmm. So in, okay. in, in failover cluster manager, um, the volumes changed the name somehow, right? It's now, um, this was the, the replica mm -hmm. volume, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now the replica is here. No, yes, it's on the fourth one, right? So if we look here, the groups, here is like it is. Uh, but in failover cluster manager, it seems like now the odd size has also the group name group and not replica group. So in failover cluster manager, this is a bit misleading, right? If you see it here. Yeah, it's now called like this and mm -hmm. replica is on the other side. Uh, but the volume name is is correct for so this is representing the volume name and yeah. in the partnership we see the uh, storage replica uh, groups Group. so that's the difference yeah, yeah, yeah. okay different. so let's open a role that is running on the fourth one uh -huh. okay better it would be if we had io meter here but we don't unfortunately uh -huh. because then we would see if the io is going down but it should when the partnership is switched, I I would say. Do we you have, have your I/O meter VM? Do you have it still? Yes, I so have. No. I have. Of course, I have. But we have to move it on this uh, volume to show it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is a VM because we don't see anything here. That's the problem. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Should I move the VM? We pause here and I move an I/O meter to switch uh, volume. Can you? Um, no, you probably can't, you know, open up another console in this one, right? Where you can open task manager because we might, we can would do be that. able. To, yeah. I With a disk perf minus Y. We have our task manager. Ah, yes. So 
can you do a um, yes a run we... file mm -hmm. run new task please yeah and then you you mean disk. enable yes no uh, disk perf or yeah disk perf minus y yes i know what you want <laughs> but now yeah. we have a, another powershell because uh -huh. we have to stop task manager again mm -hmm. yeah that's good Let's see <laughs> that was wrong m g r yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah so here we have okay. our disks mm -hmm. so if you switch to the hard disk for the view yeah okay so that's good so we see okay. here it's it's uh, doing not too much 2.3 megabytes and writing is a megabyte right right okay sounds good so now master of ceremony do your Switching. job <laughs> i do my yeah. job now <laughs> so let's Mm -hmm. switch the direction of this replication and then go back to the vm mm -hmm. here we are still mm -hmm. writing mm -hmm. and now the volume is coming to the site where the vm is running right so now we are at zero mm -hmm. and the active time is going to one and there we are again that was fast right mm -hmm. There are maybe yeah. maybe five seconds or so. What would you say? Right. Yeah. That's I, I. I told you. I'm. 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 I'm really uh, surprised how good the, the stretch cluster is, <laughs> with one flaw. But I think yeah. we will. We get. We get something there. Too. Yeah. Okay. That's that's cool. So now. No, I would say you know as an application owner, I could live with that, right? So that's uh, at least if. If it's planned, if it's communicated, uh, maybe even you know even five milliseconds is neglectable, right? Um, so that's good. Yeah, it was five good. seconds, not five yeah. milliseconds, Bernard. Five seconds. Sorry, yeah. apologies okay. if I have said uh, five milliseconds. Okay. <laughs> said five, but it's okay. okay. Five milliseconds would be better, of course. <laughs> so um, our disks now mm -hmm. should also be owned. Uh, we have still, of course, our our replication. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it's still running, so we have our, all our. No, let's go here in the partnership. Mm -hmm. The source, except for the cluster performance history, we will we will switch that too. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All sources are on odd nodes, yeah, because right. we want to shut down the even ones. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I do that the same with the cluster performance history now. Uh, it mm -hmm. should be not taking too long. Mm -hmm. And then we can have a look in the cluster. There are some other roles, maybe mm -hmm. the, um, yeah, it's already on the current host server, is already on one node of, uh, of the odd side. Otherwise, yep. we could move that by more actions, move core cluster resource and move it to a host. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do that. I think the cluster will do it if we shut down the node, but, uh, mm -hmm. To be to be uh, careful, we could we we could do that. Okay, mm -hmm. so I okay. think we are fine. The disks are here, so if we go to the node, mm -hmm. let's or to the to, to the node, yeah. let's see. No disks. There are still, of course, our right, our replicas. They are, they are re the the receivers, right? Yeah, the pool the pool has to be one pool has to be of one of the nodes, yeah, right. like here because okay. we have yeah. our pool on the uh, outside, but everything else mm -hmm. is moved except okay. our disks and the pool. So now we come to a part um, um, where I'm a bit unsure what will happen. So <laughs> scary. So we shut down the nodes, right? Mm -hmm. We try that. This is the fourth node. Mm -hmm. I can just stop computer. Question mm -hmm. is if it's going down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, we'll see. So one should shut down, yeah. and the second one maybe will be a bit mm -hmm. tricky. So I do stop computer here. Mm -hmm. Let's see in our cluster, fail of a cluster. If the node is going down, it's down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Failed to complete the drain node, yeah, because he couldn't drain the volumes, maybe, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I will do that with the second one too, right? Yeah. Mm 
it, it looks like it's going down also. It's draining, look there. Mm -hmm. But it can't drain maybe the roads. Yeah, the collect, where should I put uh, the collect? <laughs> the collect is uh, not a stretched volume. So we have some volumes that are um, on one side only. And uh, he can't, he can't really um, drain the collect, but it, sh it seems to go down now. Mm -hmm. So we should see maybe the node coming down too. So I have, let's see if it's going down. Let's. What what about our workload? I mean, look, can we have a look at the virtual machines? I mean, it's still it should still have you know a bunch of virtual machines running. Let's see if they show up with errors. No, why? No, why? Okay. Well, I mean, we can we can click into one here. Yeah. We don't see a, something in the preview, but this was running on the first first node anyway. So let's choose yeah. one of the second ones. Mm -hmm. Let's say connect. Should come up. Maybe the cluster is a bit bit in the mess in the pro in the moment. This is the first one. I maybe choose. I don't know. And is this one? It's one of the fourth one. So this is one of the fourth. See mm -hmm. here where we were in. Yep. Yeah. It's still it's running on the third one. It's oh, writing okay. data, no problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one is the first of the first. Mm -hmm. So why doesn't he connect to this one? Maybe the cluster has a bit of a yeah okay so but anyways i mean can we have a look at the disks now i mean um because what do you are in PowerShell? Yeah, these ones because i mean the uh the targets are offline right so the initial log volumes and the uh the source should be up and running but the replicas are offline right yeah replica uh, this is replica lock lock replica lock the lock on the source is online. Yeah, it seems everything is fine. The the even side is gone. Yeah, we okay. can't replicate, of course. So, yeah. um, I maybe let's see if it noticed now that the node is down. Yeah, we have two nodes down. Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. Let's go to PowerShell and do some do some get mm -hmm. first physical disk. Mm -hmm. So we should see that half of the disks. So we only see the disks in our um, mm -hmm. in our um, uh, odd Current side. Point. The even yeah. ones are two, four, six, eight, yeah. ten, twelve. These are only the twelve because the other side is gone. We don't mm -hmm. have the pool, right? So right. if we do get storage pool, mm -hmm. uh, pool P is very late. So we only see the odd pool because the even pool is gone, no, right. not present in the moment. Yeah. And we can't, you know, load the other pool, right? Because um, no okay. one is there where, where it would be presented. So we see our volumes. Okay. But also only the one that are in the um, in the odd pool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. So what about if we, you know, what about if we um, now enable the nodes or, or boot up the nodes again? So what would happen? Yeah, for that I have to I have to uh, press the button because I'm not I'm not logged in. So give me one minute to press the button, right? Yes, <laughs> okay. and I will cut it. I will do that now. Don't. We can pause here, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I'm back. The buttons are pressed. <laughs> now so it's maybe I time to wait. Yes, I connect to one node. Mm -hmm. Let me. Um, give me a second. Mm -hmm. My remote software is doing some crazy stuff. So let's see. Now it's working again. You see here. 
this is yeah, the VM I... is running, but um, you don't have the um, the volume, the con collect volume, so it can't. Yeah, the collect know, really... volume is gone. Really, yeah. this, this was stupid, right? I, we should we should have turned off the site, but the collect volume wasn't. So, yeah, but the virtual machines are uh, are running. The OS is there, but uh, the uh, the uh, no collect volume, right? No collect Get volume, which is cluster node. Let's see if it's already there. Yeah, they are up again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's connect to them. What happens if you um, is P if you change to PKVAC and look at the failover cluster manager? Can you have the nodes already joined the cluster again? Wait. So there are the nodes. It's they are up and running, so they are joined again. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and from the yeah, disks, here. we see that um, they show up as degraded, right? So um, yeah, let's see here. Degraded, mm -hmm. yes. There should be more, or are mm -hmm. they all of them? Let's do a refresh. Okay, I I'm missing some disks here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we are on the second node. Okay. Right. That's the problem. We have to go here, of course. There are more. Mm -hmm. So there are the disks. Mm -hmm. We don't see the status here. Uh, there is no degraded stuff. So let's see if we have storage repair jobs on the second one, right? You need to be quick, I guess, because it already said that some of them are. Get storage job. Let's see. I was quick. Was that quick enough? Yeah, they are running. They have already repaired some volumes, right? Uh -huh. Okay. So if I do a get SR, um, SR group. Yep. Group. To see the um, replication status, right? Where they are. Exactly. And then we say FT, let's say name, uh -huh. comma, and then we have or replication status. So, and then not need to name. Name. Yes. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you see, we can do that in a nice little do while thingy and adding a sleep, otherwise, sleep five. So we now see every five seconds. No, the slap is wrong. There are two E's in it and a one P, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you be fast. So we see here, mm -hmm. I would say the history is already repaired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and block copy to destination, block copy from Thor. So there's something happening. Mm -hmm. And okay. um, yeah, it's doing the trick. So if we open a task, I hit the caps lock button again. So we should see here we see network traffic 13, 15 gigabit. So that's uh -huh. over the replica network. So we it's replicating the data uh -huh. and also sending some stuff on the cluster network, but it's only megabits. So here's the main traffic with gigabits. Yeah. So right. it's. It's going on. So if we go to mm -hmm. uh talk banner, and I will just click here. Yeah. Okay. You see. Yeah. So the uh, the idea would be to you know wait until everything is showing up in green again, mm -hmm. then you know move over the workloads to the other side, change the replication order, and perform the same way. Right with the other uh, with the other site, uh, if you want to exactly. do a site maintenance, or for example, if you um, just want to shift back the workload where it was before before we did the site maintenance, then um, you know it would be changing the replication for um, for the uh, for the even um, replication groups uh, to, to. So it will repair variables. the replication. Yeah. yeah. But it, right. I think you see here, it will still be the source, will be still on the first right. node. I mean, that's, I think, something that we need to, would need to change when all of your repair jobs have been done um, to play nice with the cluster and then, you know, move the VMs and then also move the uh, 
move the replication uh, or switch the direction to where it was before. It's, okay. it's exactly the things we we done before to move all the stuff over. We have to reverse them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that's. Uh, do you okay. want to show this because the video is already nearly an hour? No, I think you know it is sort of. Um, I think we we demonstrated how to do it, and you know that we didn't lose uh, the performance, or at least you know the. Uh, I mean, if you would jump into the virtual machine number four, where we had the task manager open, yeah. to see if it's still running. Um, the VM is that... still running, but I guess so. Ah, uh, okay. So let me see. It can't present yeah, to if it the... can I don't know if it can reconnect to the volume because first we have we have to have our collect volume again right so let's see how that goes Get... so that was a volume that we have chosen um, that we have not in the um, we have not replicated so it, it, it's it, it can fail yet. over but it's only for VM fleet to run right. and but VM fleet needs it yeah and when we when we killed the the even side the volume <laughs> yeah. was gone too so all the vm fleet mm. vms can't uh, can't access the share where where all the right. files are uh, uh, what to do uh, where, so the collect is okay again so mm -hmm. if we would restart uh, the, the vm yeah, uh, the let's just them. shut it down mm -hmm. and start it up again we will show it in this vm as an example it should reconnect uh, the share to um, to the volume and then mm -hmm. it should run again. So here we are. We started mm -hmm. just to show. It. This was a for this demo. Of course, this, this setup is not optimal if we have a volume where the VMs are depending on that is not stretched. Yeah. Yeah. So, but when we do this series again, ever we will mm -hmm. uh, we will think of that. Right, Bernard? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so let's maybe recap as it was a long one, right? So there is, yeah. um, we did a uh, maintenance of an individual node, right? So the we, uh, if you pause a node, the virtual machines or all the roles that uh, that it is being executed by this node will be, you know, moved to one node in the same site, right? Um, there is no second pause or no additional pause for another node right um so the way how you would do a site maintenance is uh what we showed in the remaining uh section of this video which was you live migrate the virtual machines manually um you change the uh, the replication direction and uh, then you shut down the nodes um that's how we did it and then when you or reboot the nodes again, um, the cluster should pick up the workload, um, trying to sync the disks, uh, regenerating the data. And once this is done, um, you should be able to change or to move the virtual machines back over again and then change the direction of the replication order just as it was before you did the whole procedure. Okay. So here you see, mm -hmm. you you uh, explained it fantastically, so I can't click here, of course. So uh, this was, I guess, a VM where we had our, no, there is no disk, uh, but you see, um, you can just do that. Um, disk um, perf F minus Y, we have to start this again. Where's the mouse going? Why is the mouse going away? And we do another task manager, and this one should have the disk. No, it, it doesn't. Damn it. What, I'm, what, what am I typing here? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so but... we have a lot of traffic in the cluster because of the replication. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit slow in the moment, but the VMs are working, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Disk path minus Y, task MGR. Uh, I think I you will need it, to close all of the task manager windows in order the, to, that to was do the that. the same idea I just had, but where are they? <laughs> yeah, you probably need to kill there it first. 
Okay, there is no one. Okay, uh, but it's Anyways. running. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. No, all good. Um, so this was for the planned stuff. Now we are going to be prepare ourselves for the unplanned stuff. So for the uh, for the disaster case and see how yeah. the cluster performs in that. Um, obviously, we do that at the end of the session, right? Because if we break anything, then um, <laughs> <laughs> but let's keep fingers crossed um, and see how okay. the cluster performs in the unplanned in the unplanned section. So see you there in the next video. Bye.